Hey, what's up guys, it's Kyle, and I'm here at Milwaukee's NPS 2019, which is where they try to showcase all their new and upcoming tools to you guys and to us, and I'm gonna bring you right along and show you my top five favorite new releases that they've shown us today, so let's go. So guys, I've got these five tools I wanna to share with you that are probably the most favorite releases that Milwaukee brought to us. And I'm gonna start right off with the battery powered framing nailer. You guys know me, I've used the Hitachi for the last couple of years. It's a great nailing option if you're going full battery. Uh, it's really served all purposes. However, I've been waiting for Milwaukee to come to market with one and hoping that it was nowhere near the level of their initial release of nailers in the trim category because those were not that great. And I gotta be honest, I got to shoot a couple clips so far through this gun and it is impressive. So I'm gonna show you some demo, but first I just wanna say one of the best things that they did with this gun, unlike a lot of competitors, is they added the optional uh, magazine so you can have two clips of nails in, not just one clip. Nobody likes loading clips because I swear that's always the problem. You're out of nails as soon as you need them. So that's really cool. They've got two different hooks on this, one for like a rafter or two by whatever, but then they got one here that's a lot smaller that you can hook on your belt. I think that was a great idea because obviously you can move this out of the way. And basically, you know, it's, it's a nail gun. I don't know what else to tell you. You've got your single fire, your bump fire, which you're gonna be impressed when you see how fast I can fire with the bump fire. So let's get right into some demo because I know that's what you really want to see. All right, so to set this up, what I've got is I've got two layers of LVL that's sandwiched together. So that way you guys, you know, you know that that's one of the hardest materials out on the job site to constantly nail consistent depth. I've got my safety glasses, which this is another release of Milwaukee's. We're not gonna get into it much, but anti-fog, pretty cool. So we're gonna make sure we're wearing those. Safety third, people. And what I've got is I've got a couple different lengths of nails I wanna show you. One being a standard three inch, uh, everybody's common you know, nail for framing, three and a half inch nail. And then we're gonna end with a three inch ring shank. I haven't shot this yet, so this will be first for both of us. They didn't have these on the demo and Milwaukee ran out and grabbed them so I could do this. So let's go ahead and load up the three inch. You can see it's gonna take two if you want. And we're gonna put this in a bump fire mode. Let's start in single fire mode first. Now that sucker buried it. So three inch, you've obviously got some depth adjustment here if you want it, like most nailers. Three inch is not impressive. Anybody can make a nailer to do three inch. Not anybody actually. Uh, there's some people that can't make a nail gun do that consistently. Let's go ahead and throw these three and a halves. Now those are literally sunk the exact same and that's a half inch longer. Let's go to ring shank because we all know that ring shank is the biggest problem with most nailers in general, let alone a battery powered. There's literally no difference. You would never be able to tell which one of these was a three inch, a three and a half, or a ring shank. Now let's go into bump fire and kick this party off because I'm telling you, you're gonna be impressed. And I'm gonna leave the ring shanks in there. Trigger on. And you can do that all day. Check out the depth of drive, every single one of them. And weight wise, it's still gonna be heavier than a pneumatic, no doubt guys, it is a battery powered. So obviously this 5.0 battery, they're claiming 700 nails on a charge. That's pretty good. And other than that, it just feels good. It looks good. I feel like Milwaukee is very good at coming out with tools, not until they've figured it out. They are putting out tools super fast. They're doing a ton of new releases every year, but with this nail gun, I don't know how long they've been actually working on it, but they nailed it and I nailed it. And uh, I'm really excited. So definitely leave me some comments down below. Tell me what you think. What are you expecting from this nailer? Or maybe uh, what is your skepticism about this nailer? Because I can't wait to get it out on my job site, put it through its real paces in that you know climate. But I gotta say, it's quite impressive. You can't fake 
what we just did here. So I know you guys are asking, how much does this cost? When is it coming out? And when can you get your hands on it? They're coming out in October is what we're told. Bear Tool 349 is coming with a 5.0 battery and a bag and a charger for 449. And if you want to go to the extended two strip capacity, that's another $69 because not everybody needs two strips or just even wants this here. So look for that in October, guys. So I don't know about you guys, but that is a pretty amazing feat, I think, to be able to fire that quickly, consistently with a ring shank nail. But let's get into the next tool that I wanna show you guys. All right, so number two on the list, it's about time, guys. Milwaukee finally brought out a rear handle circular saw. You guys know you've watched me. I love their six and a half blade left and I, I mean they're right their blade right seven and a quarter saws are great but they're just not for me I've been waiting for a blade left saw so this is supposedly going to cut the 15 amp cord you guys have seen some other rear handles out there on the market this one feels really balanced I don't know what the weight is exactly 13.4 pounds I don't know that it really matters when you're cutting with such a heavy duty saw the weight is going to be there this is a 12 o battery so 12 amp hour Fits in there just nice. And we're just gonna go ahead and make some rips with this thing because you can't really explain too much about a saw. It does one thing and that's cut. Let's hope it cuts well. So we're gonna go ahead and do a couple cross cuts in this LVL just for demo. Seven and a quarter. I think this is their premium 40 tooth blade. So let's see how it goes. I think you're gonna be able to push this saw as fast as you need to. You can always stall any saw, but you're probably not gonna cut very high quality if you're pushing it that hard. Now let's do a nice long rip so you can really appreciate it. I'm pushing that. I wanted to see where it was gonna fail. I mean, it has the power that you would expect it to probably have. You've got the rafter hook, which is nice, because I know for me, I'm always climbing around. Looks like you got some dust port accessory that you can add to the saw. That is kind of nice. Probably not going to use it. Tool accessory here. But in general, the saw feels really nice. Definitely has that uh, power that you would expect from Milwaukee. So that's number two on the list. Let's go check out number three. All right, guys, so number three on the list is this thick 12-inch compound dual bevel miter saw. I think there's very few on the market. Obviously, you guys know that. Uh, DeWalt has a really nice one that people have loved. 60 pounds, and so if you're cordless, you're obviously thinking about portability. One battery M18 platform, 12-inch. It's got the power, well, look behind it here. You got 30, 330 cuts on one charge, and it's going to, basically be 15 amp capable is what they're claiming. So this is obviously just an intro. Uh, I haven't had this out on site to really put through the paces, but let's do some demos. Let's see how it handles. Cause if you, if you guys had a 10 inch Milwaukee miter saw, you might've noticed that there were some problems. I personally got rid of mine. Let's see if they fixed it on the 12 inch. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is just cut through this four by six here, just a pressure treated four by six, just to kind of show, I guess the capabilities. No shortness of power there. That's pretty good. But obviously, one of the things that I had the biggest problem with on the 10 inch was the amount of flex and movement that you would get out here with a long, you know, long cut. So let's get a little bit bigger piece of material that we can check that with. So we'll go ahead and we'll just see if we can see how nice and straight this thing is going to cut at least with construction grade material. So I just, I just basically pushed that through. I wasn't real gentle on it. And you can see, I mean, by flip-flopping it on the fence, how straight that is. There's like no flex out here with this saw. It's, that is pretty impressive. Let's do some fine detail cuts.
Got the shadow line there on your cuts. Makes it easy. I'm a big fan of the shadow line over the laser because that's always going to be accurate. Also, you've got a maximum of 60 degree right, and I think, what's the left? What's the left? How, 50 and 60. 50 degree left, 60 degree right, and on a bevel, what are we gonna get? 48 degrees both ways. It's just a test I like to call the picture frame test. I just find, and this is right out of the box, nobody's played with it, and that's a, that's a pretty good cut, pretty tight. And that's without any modification, so that's pretty good. I know the last thing we probably want to do is let's do a really tough cut. Let's do a dual bevel. Let's do a bevel both ways on this saw and rip through that LVL. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take this four by six. I'm not only gonna do a miter left here at 45, but I'm also gonna go ahead and do a bevel on the back at a 45. Just because typically when you're making these sorts of cuts, that's when the blade, you'll get some flex and some movement. Let's just see how it performs. I don't even know if it's capable of doing that. It might not be capable. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to do a four by six just because you're gonna hit your, uh, you're gonna hit some of your shroud for your dust collection. I honestly didn't know if that would be possible. You can see what I was trying to do. Let's just take this LVL. So just for demonstration purposes, I mean, that's a very, um, that's a very tough cut. If you guys have ever cut any, you know, bird's mouth or any rafter, jacktails or anything like that, you would know that, you know, that's a hard cut to do. Yeah, seems pretty powerful. Let's go ahead and let's head to number four. All right, guys, so number four on the list of the most exciting things here at MPS is gonna be this trim router. So if you guys have been following me, I do all of my window cutouts after we've plywooded right over them with a circular saw. And so many of you guys have said, dude, get a router. And I'm like, I don't have power on the job site. My Makita router has never cut it. Well, they're claiming this Milwaukee fuel router to be just as good as corded. It's gonna do 250 feet with a roundover bit in red oak is what they're claiming. Right now we've got a spiral bit and we're gonna go ahead and just whip out a window cutout simulation here. Let's see if it's got the power. So let's just go ahead and rip this. Let's see what happens here. I just pushed that pretty hard, no issues. Obviously a bit is gonna have a lot to do with the performance. So um, definitely you wanna make sure you have a good bit, but the power, I don't think this thing was gonna stop no matter how hard I pushed it. All right, enough of that, let's go see number five. All right, and for number five guys, what job site is complete without a radio? Milwaukee, about time you listened to everybody's suggestions and came out with the pack out radio but this is $299, so it better bring a party. Let's see. It's a pretty impressive sound.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I love the fact that uh, Milwaukee invited me out here and I was able to take you guys along for the ride. Definitely have amazing innovations that, to be honest, I didn't even get time to share all of them with you, but if you would, hit that subscribe button and you guys can follow along, especially in the next year as we uh, hopefully get the opportunity to use some of these tools on site, on the real job site, where I can really put them to the test before you guys go spend your hard-earned money at least give me the opportunity to tell you what I think about it and do what you will. But I think it's about time. We probably got to get out of here. Let's get out of here, Jared. So do you think they would, uh, think they'd mind if we packed up some tools in this pack out, got out of here? I don't think they'll even notice. All right, guys, I couldn't resist. There's way too many cool tools. So I got some bonus footage for you. We got the nine inch cutoff saw that's going to cut metal or concrete, and who doesn't love some good spark footage?